Tonight, we're debuting a special event series on Fox 5 News, IT. Yes, so what is IT, you might ask? The internet, technology, information, targets, all things cybersecurity, and what they mean in your daily life. Okay, we're going to kick things off by asking a very simple question. Why does privacy matter? You may think you've heard it all before, but you don't know the half of it. Here's Arthur Chien. After this segment, you'll decide you're one of two people, one who thinks privacy matters and the other kind who says it doesn't really. They often say, I have nothing to hide, but look at this analogy. Even when you're at home and you're not doing anything wrong, do you want people outside taking notes on everything you do? That's essentially legal online right now, and that's not even when your security is compromised. The security company McAfee says every four seconds, a new strain of malware is created and the best technology can't even catch 45% of it. When it comes to internet privacy, we find it easier splitting it into two categories. Privacy in terms of operating safely, and privacy in terms of operating securely. Hacker Matt Mitchell will describe the first. Cybersecurity guru Adam Levin will describe the latter. When it comes to being safe on the internet, it has nothing to do with the attitude of, I have nothing to hide. We all do have something to hide, even if we're not doing anything wrong. So you might not realize it, but you do have something to hide because you don't say, Hi, my name's Arthur. This is how much I make every year. This is my home address. This is the fastest way to get to my home. It's my phone number. This is my parents' phone numbers. It's my social security number. I don't. And yet, that's what we put out on the internet without our knowing. Matt gave us an example of how it can all be found legally. Punching my name into two websites, he had it within seconds. Wow, and that fast. That, that fast, boom. So four results came up, and we're looking at people who have your name, mm -hmm. and what we're seeing are places where that person may have lived or worked, and people who that person may be related to. Well, that is me, Yeah. and it automatically has some of my contacts, including some people I talk to often, some, even those that I haven't talked to in a while. Or yeah, it's very strange uh, how that works. If you just click on the, the, your name there, let's see if it's able to drill in and find it. And it even has a picture, wherever they got that picture from. That's yeah. not, and so it has a username, it has an additional name, a location, and then it has access to other profiles. That guy I worked with like 15 years ago. With permission, Matt and I then logged into the email of a friend who will keep anonymous. And all his whereabouts so far in 2017 popped right up in scary detail. Not only was Matt able to guess a few things about this friend, he guessed right. So I can tell by the most points that they work within one cluster, and the further points tend to be places where they would vacation at the most further point of, of if you make concentric rings, and then the kind of middle points would be like friends, family, things like that. This is on Wednesday. This is the, the route the individual took. This yeah. is Thursday? Yeah, that's on Thursday. And this is on Friday? That's on Friday. So you know the person's exact whereabouts. Yeah. It even differentiated when the subject was driving and when he was walking. And mind you, this is all legal. No security compromised here. Companies use this information legally for all sorts of ways to make more money off you. Airlines, for instance, jack up prices on those using a Mac instead of a PC to search for airfares. They can see, like Matt was able to, if it's someplace you go to often or if it's a trip you really need to take. A lot of advertisers will use when you're searching you're going to a location and that, that you visit those data points or you like to look at that price point a lot, the price will be raised so it'll be higher. That's a glimpse of your internet safety. Now on to how weak privacy rules affect our internet security. How would you characterize the level of concern the public should have with respect to their privacy? DEFCON 5. That I think that, that, that we have very little privacy left. Basically, information collected under weak privacy rules can end up being stolen by criminals. As an identity theft expert, Adam has tracked countless cases where our information, amassed legally, was then used illegally, a collapse in security. The downsides of, of lack of loss of privacy is that you could become a victim of identity theft, you could become a victim of an extortion plot, you could have data that's very important to you that suddenly gets encrypted by way of ransomware. In 2015 alone, just four data breaches in that year compromised more than one-third of our entire country's population. And there were countless breaches that year. They ranged from using a victim's identity to buy things and apply for new credit cards to buy more things, to hacking computer webcams to record pictures and videos used to extort the victim. And the biggest, newest cybercrime problem, ransomware and data kidnapping, where hackers encrypt your computer and won't undo it unless you pay a ransom. 
We're on so many databases, and so many databases have already been breached. When there is a data breach, someone hits the jackpot. If your Facebook or Twitter account is stolen, they can get $2.50 on the black market. If someone hacks your iTunes, they can get $8 for it. The information is sold over and over again on the black market to buyer after buyer until it has little value left, and then gets dumped on a free pile. And that's generally when the public world finds out there was a breach to begin with, a lag time that can take years. So let's try typing in an email address. Matt demonstrated by punching my email into haveibeenpwned.com, a site created by Troy Hunt at Microsoft to see if someone's privacy has been breached. On the spot, I learned I've been compromised. It says something did happen to one of my accounts. Yes, uh, in this case, Dropbox was hacked in 2012 and that data showed up on the internet in August 2016. Now remember that process we just showed you? Taking my Dropbox data breach in 2012 as an example, it was sold an unknown amount of times on the black market for the next four years, dumped on the free pile in 2016, and that's the earliest the public got to know it ever happened to begin with. And it wasn't just my information that was breached, but 68 million others. And I find out now, five years later, you heard right. Mine was one of 68 million accounts compromised, and they got emails and their passwords. These days, to log into anything, we use our emails. So if you use the same password for something else, that account is compromised too. And for instance, if my password was Dropbox123, they're going to try to get into my bank using the name of the bank followed by 123. It's a common hacker trick, and it works a lot. That's why privacy matters from a security standpoint. Finally, we leave you with one point. If you're not paying for something on the internet, like Instagram, Google, Twitter, Gmail, Facebook, it's because you are the product. Companies are there to get your information so they can monetize you. For instance, Matt uses a plugin to show what Facebook is getting off each picture we post. Well, on a picture like this one, which was uploaded, Facebook is saying that this is a picture of one or more people in sunglasses outdoor, right? <laughs> so, the computer reads the photograph and gets that information. It then uses the facial recognition of us, you know, mapping people's faces, right? Like, let's say, like, when we tag someone, who those people were, we have the date, we have the location, and all the text that's ever written in all the comments, and it's just put into a profile on you to help better target you for advertising on Facebook and better target what you see in this river. And that's if it stays in the river stream. Often it gets out and that can cost us in ways we did not expect. It's worth reminding us even when you delete something on Facebook for instance it stays on their server. It's all in the fine print which we rarely read. There are people who have lost jobs. There are people who have been uh, not hired uh, because of pictures or statements online. There are young people who may be denied admission to a university of their choice because of something they said or did online. There are several steps you can and should take to protect yourself. From two-step authentication to password protectors, we'll put links to a few that can get you started in the right direction. Protecting yourself and scrubbing your digital records clean is also the focus of an upcoming segment in this series. And let's not forget, within the framework of all of this, Congress just made it legal to sell all of this type of information. Your internet service providers may even sell the content of your emails. After watching this whole segment, which person are you? The one who thinks privacy matters or the one who thinks it does not? Arthur Chan, Fox 5 News. So frightening. Whatever.